All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. And guys, we've been having an amazing time on the show today. If you're just joining us, where you don't do since because we don't do a lot of things from the top stories to the newspaper review to better interview where we just get now with uh, one better individual. She call herself uh, Joyce Daniels and a uh, very uh, better person on top of the MC level. So we're moving on to the next level of the matter. And we get this special guy. We, 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 we the interview him earlier, but we get some kind, you know, technical situations. So we talked so we could bring him back on top of the show today because we would like to hear inside of the story, seeing the fact of, uh, seeing the situation of the country and the things we don't happen, we affect the own industry. So we did talk about one better individual what they call Lord Sky. For, for those of you that we don't know, I'm going to check out this video we put together. Check him out. Now, in case you're wondering what's, what does that mean, what is backing dog, Chihuahua, Nkuta, Nkita, Ubuzo? Yeah. Yeah, it was a fight between Omashola and Tasha of the Big Brother house. And Lot Sky, who is joining us right now, decided to make a bit. The bit went viral and he decided on to shoot, shoot a video for it. Lot Sky, thank you very much for joining us again. Yes, yes. Oh, welcome, you're welcome. Yes, yeah, so... Aha, this, this time, I want to... Now we is, can... Yes, the connection is connecting. Well. Everything is clear, everything yeah, is well, fresh. Well, good vibes now, man. It's good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lord Sky, how... Uh, make we even know, from your side now, you, how has it been for you? Let's even talk about the coronavirus situation, the lockdown, the pandemic. When the thing first happened, what do you think? Did you ever think it will be like this? Did you ever think that... Who stay this long? What was your own thoughts about it in the first place? Oh, in no way I imagined that it will stay this long or it will cripple, cripple us this much. Wow. I thought it would just come, you know, Ebola came the yeah. other time, he just came, you shook everybody, he left. Yeah. But this one, people held us down. So mm. it's like we had to start restructuring new, new operations, new mm. ways of working, new ways of getting things done. It's like everybody has been rebuilding starting something new, recreating from scratch. You know, it just pushed us into something we're not expecting. And we're, I think we're handling it okay to a level. <laughs> just okay. As a producer, what would you say or what difference has the impact of COVID-19 pandemic had on your business? How have you been able to adjust? Um, so far, it is the part where you get in studio to work with artists. That has reduced a lot. So... A lot of us are adjusting now to, you know, working remotely, create a beat here, send to an artist here, except it's someone really huge or it's a really huge project. So you sanitize, pray, <laughs> <laughs> and come to me. Baba says sanitize, sanitize and, pray. and pray. As in two of them together. That's those. You know what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Most of them has been remote. In fact, I had a session the other day where I had to Zoom call with the artist and teach him how to record himself. I'm like, you have to tap this one, yeah, wait, sing, okay, the levels are due, turn this knob down. It's crazy, we're doing all kinds of things just to make sure this creative process keeps coming back to the fans. Now, seeing that uh, not all uh, artists have like home studios, where you can say, oh yeah, oh, yeah, let me show you what you're doing, do this and do that. Exactly. How they come, they do the recording? Say they go send you voice notes. Have you had it? How do they do it then? Seeing that they can't come into the studio it's great. and record. Some haven't recorded. Some have been going back to their old songs. That is, uh, this one knows sweet. This one knows sweet. They are going to re listen to it and like, okay, this is the one I'll put out. Oh. And some are, yeah, some are, because artists always have stacks of songs yes. that, from which they choose which to release. So some are going back to them. Some are like I had someone bring me a MIDI device recently, a MIDI interface, and he told me I was like the fifth person he was delivering something to. A lot of artists that ordering musical instruments, uh, studio equipment, just to be able to record. And some of them have uh, side producers that they don't really trust them fully for their music, but they can record them. And if they've been living together for a while, then it's easy to just say, okay, you begin the record meal, and then they send back here and there. And, but it, a lot of them are struggling, trust me. A lot of artists are struggling with the recording because, process. Uh, and artists are starting to buy these devices. Do you sometimes worry that it might, in a way, 
take some work from the hands of producers. And I'm asking because uh, a lot of us have learned to adapt. For, for me, I've learned to care yeah. for my hair, wash my hair, treat my hair, weave my hair by myself during the COVID-19 pandemic. So I may not need to go to the salon as frequently as I used to go to before. Do you worry that that's something that may happen to producers? I, I don't worry about that at all because they can, it will take a lot of years for you to get into that pre creative process of being like a producer and, and learning how to fully do it. Now, recording yourself is the easiest part. Recording an artist is the easiest part. You just press record, they sing, press record, they sing. But yeah, that process of creating the beats, that part of, that process of cleaning up what they sang, because if the artist comes here and sings and then he sings in the studio, you can clearly know the difference. So that whole part of learning how to create a full song, mm -mm. but there's parts to this. An artist can always learn how to record themselves. And that's not really one of the things that a producer makes a lot of money from. He makes a lot of money and revenue from actually creating the whole song from start to finish, different parts of it. Recording is the easiest part. Now, looking at uh, the this industry now, knowing that, ah, because of this uh, virus and this pandemic, a lot of things, people are trying so hard to remain relevant. And like you said, some of these artists, they go back to their, you know, previous songs that they've had before, trying to do a remake or yeah. do a remix with somebody else. And uh, how mm -hmm. has, I'm, I'm sure that has been the case with you when uh, you say that people can't come in to the studio to record anymore. So they are giving you remakes. Now, as a producer, when you get a, a like an old song and they expect you to do a remake, uh, would you be? Uh, are you usually fully in charge of the direction it goes, or would you just let them say, "Oh yeah, give me two, wait, wait, change me the <laughs> bah, I don't like this drum. I don't like this one. How how does it work for you? Because there are lots of artists who feel that somewhere in their mind they are producers, but in real life they are artists. They don't usually used to give the uh, the, the producer, you know, full. Um, 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 creative idea over the, the song. They want to always jump on it. So how has it been for you in this space? The, this is the way I handle it. People handle it differently. But if you bring something that has been done before to me, the first thing I'll, I'll ask is who produced it before? Do you have the right to actually remake? Okay. And if they tell me they have the rights, they may be lying, they may be saying the truth, but as long as they tell me they have the right to remake it, then yes, that's one part is gone. And then the next thing I'm going to tell them is, it's not going to sound like this. I'm just going to take your vocal idea and create something new with the same vocals you had. And it will be Lord Sky, it will be bouncy, it will be that. And as soon as we agree on that, and then I can jump on the project, because I don't want to go remaking something and tomorrow I'll be on Insta blog. Now, now my beat now, you don't know, see now we make that beat, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> So, yeah. so, so you rather start um, with a new beat, create a new beat just under the vocals yeah. that I was giving to you. Oh. Exactly. If they bring something like that to me, I'm creating new. Except the producer is giving them rights for me to co-produce on the track. Okay. And then in that case, they have to send me full data of the song, and then I'm co-producing. I'm not totally producing the song. Okay. Speaking of, uh, you you had mentioned copyright, and if they have the right to to remake the song or the rights to the beat. I was wondering how many issues producer, how many copyright issues producers in Nigeria have. And I'm asking this because there have been several back and forth as regards copyright. You know, photographers will tell you, I took the photo. Uh, so therefore, they will watermark the photo. Then the, the owner of the photo is saying, no, I'm the one in the photo. Therefore, I should have the rights to the photo and I paid you for it. So they're, they're back and forth here and there as regards copyright. And also, we know that producers always leave their signature on the beat, Lord Sky on the beat, even if it is not your song. So, you leaving your signature on the beat, is there some sort of concession you make in terms of pricing, or is that the standard operating procedure that every producer should leave their signature on the beat, whether or not they were paid for it? You see, the signature on the beat is, is just vibes. Let me say it like that, it's just vibes, because that signature is the easiest thing to remove. If they don't want it on the beat, it's too easy to remove it. So can I so tell you, the, I don't want to hear Lord Sky on the beat on this And beat. would you produce yeah, a beat like that? Yeah, if they take that out and they pay fully for the song, then they take that out. But the thing is, once you've worked your brand to a point where um, 
you are known and they want to be identified with you, they're the ones that will ask you, why you don't put this thing for beginning? So that's how it is. So it's about both of you wanting it to be on the track. If the artist doesn't want that signature on the track and they pay for it, the signature is going out. Yeah, no. So it's not even a thing of pay less. It's just whether both of you want it on the track. Yeah, because I was going to ask you now, you made a statement that if they pay uh, in full, then they can take it out. So uh, is it some sort yeah. of um, uh, agreement that, okay, I'm going to put my signature so you can pay me a certain amount? Or if I don't put my signature, then you must pay me this certain amount. Is that the kind of agreement, or is just a thing of I agree and do am um, now you make beats? No, we just play am, um, like you said, the vibes. Is it has it yeah. ever gotten to that point where that, because I've I've come to uh, uh, hear a, a complaint from an artist who said he told the producer not to put his name, his signature on the beats, and the producer did, and he took it off, and the producer was like, okay, you can't take off my signature from that beat because I was the one who made the beats. They had a back and forth conversation. He went to court. It was, it was quite messy. So what exactly, how, how exactly is it in your case? I think, I think both of them didn't know the, uh, the legal process. If you know the legal process as a producer and producer working with artists, you would know that the signature on the beats is something that the artist has to permit. Once the artist doesn't oh. want it on the song, it, there's no question it's going out that's just something you decided to put it's what you have intellectual property to is the beat the musical creation mm -hmm. so you don't have the rights to throw in vocals or throw in let me do this song let me do that song so that is just something that the artist has to permit and why i said if the artist paid in full the, the thing is if you didn't quite pay for the song or anything it's it's, it's like there's no legal process that has been fully agreed to so the producer can pretty much do anything like oh you didn't pay for it anyway let me just make sure i put my name out there just in case the song pops just to get some publicity from it but normally all you have intellectual rights to are the beat is the beat the musical creation and you don't quite have the right to throw in your signature on any song you like except the artist wants it on there okay now, for budding producers, because we know that a lot of people have time on their hands now, they're at home and they can go on the internet and learn as many skills as they like. On the average, how long does it take for you to learn to be a producer, a music producer? It uh, usually depends on what uh, background knowledge you have. Okay. So let's say you have zero background knowledge, don't know how to play a musical instrument, it will take very much longer. Because the way the music production goes is you don't learn everything at the same time. It's like you have enough knowledge to start. And then as you start, you keep improving, keep improving. So I will say maybe in like, if you put a timeline on it, I will say in less than a year, you can create beats. Whether the beats are banging or not depends on your creative ability and how much time you put in there to make sure you're able to refine everything. That's for the production aspect. Then if you become a mixing and mastering engineer, that's going to take years because there's something where the your ears have to be trained to picking up frequencies and stuff like that. That takes a while. But for make, just making beats under a year. All right, so Lotskai, I would like to ask this question. For you now, did you always want to be a producer or you wanted to be an artist? But you realize that to, to go to and do production money is quite expensive. You now say, ah, I will learn this thing. So that I can produce myself, <laughs> and you know what? What? How was it for you starting up? Did you always know you want to be a producer, or you were an artist who wanted to, you know, just know the knowledge and get get it into use? Yeah. Uh, just to clear that out, I never wanted to be an artist. I don't have the artist persona, the, the artist. All ah, that but stuff you have the artist me. looks. But now. you still look like uh, you still get swag. So waiting again. We have so many Nigerian artists that it's just swag they have. They don't have content. Ah, just swag. Uh, they're war. So, <laughs> not true now. <laughs> they're dead. So, as I was saying, um, I always wanted to make music because as a kid, I, I was a, a really young kid when I started playing the piano, the drum, mm -hmm. I played multiple instruments. And I wasn't taught, I was self-taught, so there mm -hmm. was the drive always. As a kid, I used to make beats for a couple of guys, just vibes, you know, were just having fun. They go to talent shows and stuff. But then I went to school and I studied uh, computer programming and 
I was that tech guy. So that's what I used to do. Like you go to school, you have to practice that. But somehow along the line, I made one beat that was banging. And then I realized that, you know, making music is way more fun than being a musical, uh, than being a programmer. I constantly doing it. And if I pop, it's way more money than that. So it's like, why not just do the hobby and make money from it? That's mm. how I trailed back into being a producer. But never in this part was the part of uh, be an artist or sing or nah. I've always tried, wanted to create music and sound, but not really jump on the mic. All right, um, let's talk about your relationship with your brother. Your uh, producer, your brother is oh, an yeah. artist. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so is it because of your brother you decided <laughs> to become a producer? <laughs> Did you say, ah, bro, I will make you a star? Forget all those people that don't want to do beats for us. I will make you a star. Was that one of the reasons why you decided to do this? Actually, I could make beats, right? Mm -hmm but not professionally. And I was in school at the time. My brother, King Josh, he was in Cyprus. He was an artist in Cyprus. He was big in Cyprus at the time. So when he was starting there, he was like, oh, let's make some, you know, make me, I'm like, yo, I, before I make this thing, I need to learn properly how to, I mean, I know how to make beats on the keyboard and stuff, but this is a whole ball game. And I was in school at the time, I didn't have the time. So he made a couple of songs with other producers, but when I was getting to the end of school and then I was considering maybe I should, that was actually a big factor because when you're trying to go into something, it's like, okay, let's say I want to be a producer. Who do I give my beats to? But he was there already as an artist with a platform down there. So one time he was in school and I made, I was just working on myself, working on my game. I made this banging beat. It was insane. So when he came back from Cyprus and I played it for him, we were together and he was like, whoa, that's insane. And then, the next day, we took the beat to a studio. Now, I'm stepping into a studio. I didn't know what to do in there. There was a producer he used to work with, and he was like, I have this beat. The producer was like, insane. And we recorded on that beat. Not we. I made the beat. I was just sitting in the back. And then the song was banging, and Iyanya yeah, heard the song, and they wanted to do a remix on the song. So somehow, we had to change some parts of the beat, but that was actually the first song I produced, and it was just by I wasn't the producer then. So after doing that one and seeing how far the song went in Cyprus, then I was like, okay, maybe. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then from then I started to work so now my it's music a tag production team, It's a tag team thing. Brother producer, brother yeah, artist. It's a tag artist. Mm. So you guys didn't have any issue with sharing money, Sha? Say, okay. Now that I gave you the beat, you have to, you no, are singing the song. Not at all. You don't have that issue. You do have a close knit family, <laughs> not Sky, right? Not at all. Yeah, 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 very close knit, actually. I, I can tell. <laughs> it's not like P Square that they are fighting. What is it? <laughs> I'm just, hey, hey. Please, Adewo is known to throw shit. Speaking of P Square, you work with one of the twin brothers. Um, how did your relationship with him start? Yep. Um, our relationship with him was, it was easy. It was, how would I call it? It was unexpected. You know, like I said, I was working on myself being a producer from like 2014 to 2016. And in this process, I was going deep. I was learning everything. So when I had the ideas to create, the idea to create, you know, music from this spoken word, these speeches, these funny speeches online, and I went to it when I did the first one and it went viral and they asked for another one. At the time I did the second one, it was uh, Hungaga, Twangaga. I think the day I dropped it. And then you see, at the time I didn't, I just know them as P Square. I know one of them reposted it and I'm like, oh, insane. I told King George like, yo, repost it. And it was cool to me. And by the evening of that day, he sent me a DM and he was like, he followed me. He, I was I was so silly. I wasn't even following him at the time. <laughs> he followed me and sent me a DM and he was like, like what he did, what I did, it was crazy. And then I was like, oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. And then I think by the next day I told King Josh, I was like, yo, he sent me a DM. He said he liked you. I'm like, yeah. He, then King Josh was like, what what did you say? <laughs> I said, Yeah, I told him thank you. He's like, that's all you said? <laughs> <laughs> that's all I... <laughs> I'm kidding. 
<laughs> then he was like, okay, take your phone, type what I'm telling you. <laughs> and then Josh he, is a savvy guy. <laughs> he took it another level. It was like, take your phone, type what I'm telling you. Tell him, I want to produce one song for you. Then he, he was like, write free. Just so he will know you're not trying to chop him. Just so he knows you're trying to actually work with him, like yeah. creatively to create something. Yeah. So I wrote, as King said, I want to create one song with you three. You know, just tell me the tempo, the type. Anyways, I'll create it. I'll send it to you. And then Rude Boy laughed. And when he laughed, he was like, he sent me his address. He's like, this is my address. This is my phone number. Man. Come through tomorrow. Let's just hang out. Wow. And nice. yeah. So by the next day, went to his place i called him he was like yeah come to i went in there he was there uh, smash bracket was there a couple of other guys and at the time i didn't really know root boy sound and root boy style so i went there with all my mad beats i was just playing you wanted to tear the place <laughs> destroy the sound let them shake little did you know <laughs> little did i know he wasn't he didn't even move him uh, and then there's a back section of the studio where he goes to if he goes out there he can still hear stuff playing from the studio mm -hmm. so when he went out to the back one of the guys that was with smash bracket just came to me was like ah, all this style you're playing is not his sound uh, uh, <laughs> I, think I, believe, I think right now he's looking for something highlight i'm like oh highlight i i didn't have one highlight beat. wow so as I said, okay, I, nope, I'm like, no problem. I closed the whole session. I opened the new se session. I had my small keyboard there. I started to make highlights. And then he popped in through the through the door. And he was like, oh, I, I like it. I like them. Okay, let's go like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and then, so it's like, what, what really hooked him was the fact that right there, I was creating something totally different, different. from everything that I had brought. And it was getting to him. So he was like, oh, I like it. I like it. Let's work tomorrow hmm. and then i think it was the next day we then created in kenji kk and it was supposed to be one track like i told him but after we created that track he had a lot of tracks that he played for me but when we created in kenji kk it was the first song he released after the breakup along with fire fire so after that it was like from then on it's, he calls me every time he has an idea and then we just Great song. So many lessons to learn from this story. Seriously. One, do not be afraid to shoot your shot. In fact, before the shooting your shots beat, nobody will know what you can do unless you put it you out put there. It out I mean, there. you jumped on this creative idea, he saw it, and then he sent you a DM. Two, don't be afraid to shoot yep. your shots. God bless King Josh for pushing <laughs> you to shoot your shots. And three, yeah, be willing to adapt in the moment. Yes. You are willing to adapt. Oh, it's not. Some people say, "Ah, no, I'm sorry. This is the kind of sound." I do not R and B. I only do, is, I only I do gospel Indian pop. Well, I don't do a lot. What is that? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Oh my goodness! But it's good that that immediately. Now, I would say you had you are taking out time to learn. That was why you were able to you know. To, you were ready when the you moment were ready came. When he said, "Okay, this is not my sound," and you're like, "Oh, okay." High life. Yeah. I've, I've probably listened to some kind of good high life. I can create something out of it. And the good thing is that I was going to ask this question earlier about uh, being a producer. And you just uh, made it clear in your last conversation that uh, you should know how to play a musical instrument. Every producer should know how to do that. Right? It's, 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 it's a standard. Every producer should know how to play a musical um, instrument. Is say, that it? I would say in 2020, mm -hmm. maybe in the years past, but now it's like technology has done so much that if you are a beat maker, you can actually create the beats without knowing how to play an instrument. Mm -hmm. You might just have an idea, touch around, you can actually click in the sounds. Okay. But then your, your, creative, your creative level is limited to you creating before artist comes there. Mm -hmm. If an artist comes with a song, like this is my song, forget it. If you don't know how to, play because at that point you can't start clicking everything has to come clicking, from inside. Yeah. Mm. yeah you can't start clicking in there so you can actually succeed i'm not trying to cut some people off and say if you don't know how to play a musical okay. instrument at the end for you i'm telling you there are some of the really top producers in nigeria right now that don't know how to play an inst a musical instrument but they still succeed mm. so you can actually hold on to that part where you make some banging beats and send to producers and they catch the vibe but then there are some things you can't do. You can't create on the spot. You can't, 
you can't be on stage, you can't all that part, but you can still create if you don't know how to play a musical instrument. But if you do, it gives you an edge. Yeah, okay. Let's okay. Kai, before okay. we let you go, Adewa and I are looking to explore our musical talent. Hey. If you do beat for us, why uh -uh. do you say hey? Hey! <laughs> Lost, uh, <laughs> no. Lost Kai. It's not like... What, what? We are looking to explore our musical talent. You know, we, we are looking to diversify okay. our, our sources and streams of income. Mm. So we would like to jump on the studio with Lost Kai on the mm. beat. Oh, man. Lost Kai is free. Oh. We are looking for free. It's free. Oh. With, it's free. Oh. We don't have, got, we don't have money. <laughs> so... Everybody, you heard it first. The one and I are going to be jumping into the studio. We yeah. love Sky on the beat. Hey. You heard it first on Wazobia TV. Good hey. morning, Nigel. It's going to be like, Ch hey. chicken know they cry for nights. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Chicken know they cry hey. for nights. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Chicken know they cry for nights. Uh -huh. If they cry for nights, we go kill and chop. Hey. If the owner come, we go tell them, say, hey. chicken, chicken know they, they cry, cry for nights. Night. Yeah. Drop, Drop the mic. mic. Hey. <laughs> Don't you think you can sign us now? <laughs> if I can, if I can make a banger from back in the Chihuahua, then you don't finish work. Right? Ah! You see how we don't blow. We have blown. We don't blow. We blow. Twenty twenty is our year. year. <laughs> we have blown. Lost Kai, thank you so much. It's always such a delight to speak with you. What should we expect from you? Are you working on any projects you like yeah. to share with us? Yeah. Yes, actually. Um, I have, uh, there's a big track right now, it's, uh, it's on wave right now. I have a remix of the track coming in June. It sent, the record label sent to me and I have a Lord Sky remix. It's coming in June. It'll be big. In mm. July, uh, you know, a Better Time album is coming out. I recorded a big track with him a couple of days ago on that album. So expect that June, hey. July. Congratulations. Nice one. Nice one. Nice well done, nice Last Sky. We're rooting for you. We're cheering for nice you. One. And we look forward to having you as more Very projects tough. come up. Nice we're here. For, and we'll see you in the studio shortly. Very soon. We're because why? Yeah. Chicken, no, they, Chicken cry no, they cry for night. Peace out. All right. <laughs> <laughs>